How to fix a relationship that is falling apart. I'm Mel Devores. I'm your Sparkle Coach. Today, Friday, we're talking about dating after 40, getting your relationship going back, getting a relationship at all, and all those things that we talk about on Fridays, and we love it, love it, love it. So today, let's talk about fixing a relationship that's falling apart because nobody likes that. It's just not fun. It sucks. And you lose your sparkle, damn it. So I have some notes because I really don't want to miss anything I want to talk about today. So you fell in love for a reason. You met this person and they got your butterflies all going, woo, you felt all fluttery. And it was like, wow, this person, I'm liking what they got going on, honey. Like this is, yes, right? And then over time, Things get routine, there's no more dating, there's no more chivalry. And you know what? I got a pet peeve. Nowadays, maybe there's not even courtship and pursuing. Maybe it goes right into routine. What? WTF. I don't like it. It is not good. Let's bring back pursuing and courtship. Please. Let's come on now. Let's let's make it a movement. Okay. So over time, after you get if it gets stale and it gets all out of balance, really, then petty nags and disagreements and then blown out fights. Oh, I hate those. Don't you hate those? Stubbornness and pride get in the way. And then the worst thing, this is the worst. So many of us do it. I'm guilty of it and I'm working on it. People cannot read your mind, honey. You cannot read their mind. So if there's something going on, right, and you think, well, they should know. They should know because 15 years ago, I was a certain way and I liked a certain thing. Maybe you've evolved. We all evolve. Everyone evolves over time. And to make the relationship last, we've got to evolve together. So communicate. Maybe this is now something that bothers you that never bothered you before, right? I mean... Cute little habits. Oh, that's so cute how he just leaves the garbage or whatever. Right? <laughs> and then later on, you're like, what the hell? He's not taking the garbage out. Or she's not doing this or whatever, right? Things that used to be cute aren't cute anymore. So we need to communicate. So there's that. We've got to stop being stubborn. Stop trying to read minds and all that. And really get back to the beginning. Get back to the beginning. And here's the good news. People say, if you love each other, you're going to get through this. If you love each other, everything's going to be fine. Don't worry about it. I disagree because love, you can love somebody and not be with them anymore. If you respect them still, that is the key. So if you both respect each other still, Yes, this is fixable, honey, and you are on your way to romance, okay? So let's see. So the thing that we need is communication, and I know it sounds super cliche because everyone says that, oh, you need to communicate, blah, blah, blah. Who's doing it, really? I mean, not very many people, and not very many people are doing it properly. That's my opinion, but it's also my experience. So the way to do it is don't wait for the volcano to erupt. That's what a lot of people do and they stuff it in and they stuff it in and then eventually it's like, rah, one little thing happens and then your partner's like, what? Blindsided, like, I, why are you so mad about this lint ball on the couch? Like, I don't understand why you're so upset. So see, it just takes things out of perspective. But also, if you don't ever say anything or if they don't ever say anything, you don't have a chance to work on anything And then a lot of relationships end because there was never any communication. It's not good. So another thing is you have to learn each other's personality. Like I was saying, we evolve. So you have to learn the other person's personality and their communication styles because you may be a blunt to the point person, but they may be a really soft, sensitive person. So we all have to kind of work our way around that. If, if you're a harsh person and they're a sensitive person, you being harsh is going to hurt them more. So if you can, back off on the harshness a little bit and consider their sensitivity and soften your tone. 
Soften your tone. Say exactly what you were going to say, but soften your tone. You will get through to them. And if you're a sensitive person and they're more blunt, if you walk up to your blunt person, say, hi, I have her. They're going to be like, Pfft. it's going to piss them off. So if, if they're a blunt person, think of a way that you can short, sweet, to the point, and a little bit more of a powerful voice say. Just go up and say, you know, it would be so cool if you could just do blah, 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 or whatever. Like, you know, kind of adapt to what your partner likes and how they respond. And that will work so much better. Uh, learn each other's priorities and respect and honor those. It may be not, it may not be a priority for you to put your clothes in the hamper, but it may be for them. Just honor it. It takes two seconds. You know what I mean? It's these little things that really get people and they don't have to. And then here's the fun one. So make daily mundane stuff fun and lighthearted. Joke around. Stop complaining. Stop nagging. Stop whatever the negative stuff is and make it fun. So, you know, if you're chopping vegetables, cooking together, a little innuendo goes a long way. Know what I'm saying? Or if you're doing the dishes and splash a little water. I hate that, by the way. But <laughs> some people like it and it's fun. <laughs> And with the towel, you can like snap a little bit with the towel. You can pat a little bit on the butt, you know, do little things like that and make it fun. You've got to do the damn dishes anyways. So make it fun. Why not? Right? Make a joke about things. If, if he hasn't done something, you can walk in and go, you know, you can, you can even do like a third person role play. You can go in and say, you know what? There's this hot guy. Man, and he's sitting on my couch all day. And he's not doing, you know, and man, I'd sure like it if he would, because I would really be turned on or whatever. Just be funny about it. And it just changes everything. It takes the nag out of it and makes it playful. Do what you would have done in the beginning. You would never have nagged this person in the beginning, right? So remember that. So you can like smile and flirt from the yard if you're doing yard work or whatever. So pick up the romance that you started in the beginning and remember those things and do them again. Do all those things. Start over. Start fresh. Date each other, right? You know, do little nice things for each other. Leave a posty note. Leave a posty note on their lunchbox. Leave a posty note on their computer and just say, I love you or I think you're hot or whatever. Just be flirtatious and fun. It's the cutest thing ever. If your person likes gifts, you don't have to buy anything. Go outside, pick a flower and write a little note. Amazing. You'd be surprised what happens when that, right? If your person loves gifts, they're going to be like, ooh, all over you. And if you're a person who likes touchy-feely, they're going to be touchy-feely. Win, win, right? Love everywhere. So... I'm not an MFT, but I have helped so many couples get their sparkle back, get their groove back, and they have the love that a lot of us wish for that we see in the prior generations or even now. How do those people get there? How do those people get to 20 years, 30 years, 50 years? How do they do that and be happy? How do, there's a lot of unhappy couples, but how do the happy ones do it? They get through the rough times together. They respect and they love each other and they do what it took in the beginning all the time. They relearn each other. That is the key. So many people get to a certain point where it's so hard in a relationship or it's too stale and they go off to the next one, divorce or break up. They get to the next one. The same issues happen. Oh, I can't take it. Get to the next one because they're addicted to the butterflies. But if you put the butterflies back into your existing relationship, that's how you're going to get that long lasting love that everybody or a lot of people are searching for. It's just that simple. So I'm going to tell you an inspiring story in a minute that is super, super helpful. But if you're in a relationship and it's amazing, comment below to share the things that work for you. And if your relationship has gone stale, let me know in the comments which tip in this video was helpful for you. And if there's anything else that would be helpful, if you put that down in the comments, then other people will see those ideas as well. And we're all just helping each other get
get the love back, get the sparkle back in our life and our love. Okay, so here's the story that inspires me all the time. And I just want to share it with you because there's some extra tips here that weren't shared before. And this is from my great aunt who was just amazing. And she and my uncle, great uncle, had the most amazing long-term relationship. Like, I, I think it was like 60 years or something. I have to ask. Anyway, so when I was engaged, I didn't get married, but when I was engaged, I asked her to be my matron of honor. And I asked her, what is the secret to a long-term successful relationship? And the thing she said, of course, was communication. But she also said, have a separate room in the house, not to sleep. You, you don't go to bed mad, she also said. But they have, he had a den and she had a sewing room. And if things were crazy in the day, as long as it wasn't with themselves, if it was something they had going on together, an issue together, they weren't allowed to go into those rooms. They had to talk about it or pray about it together and work it out. But you know those days when you're having a bad freaking day and you're like, man, everything sucks and I just want everyone to just leave me be right now. So he would go into his den and shut the door or she would go into her sewing room, shut the door. And that way the other person knew it wasn't them. Don't take it personal. They knew because they already set that rule. So then they work out what they need to work out. They calm down or whatever. Also, in the beginning of the relationship, before they even got together, before they even got married, they talked about so many things. And one of the things was she was an extreme social butterfly and an extrovert. He was a homebody introvert. And so she wanted to travel. She wanted to have fun with her friends. So they spoke about that and they had this agreement from the beginning that she was going to spend time with her friends. She was going to travel the world and enjoy and sightsee. And he was going to be home and enjoy the things he enjoyed. So guess what they would do? Whenever she would come home from a trip, he would pick her up from the airport, take her out for a nice dinner, and they would talk about what they did with love and laughter. No fighting, no jealousy, no bullshit, right? So I think that is just amazing. And I could go on and on, but this video is really long now, but I just wanted to share one more thing that was super cute. So well into their 70s and 80s, there, my sister's video of her wedding, there, you know how they film everybody? And it came to my aunt and my uncle and she's there all sweet and she's introducing herself and she's like, and this is mine. Yeah. They would wave at each other from across the room and flirt and share a lap blanket and super sweet. They had talked about everything before. She wanted to be inside cooking or outside with her friends or whatever. She kept the house clean. He worked. He provided. He did things outside. He took care of the yard, all those things. And so they worked it out. No fighting. They talked about finances. They talked about everything prior. No fighting. So Hopefully this was inspirational and helpful for you and everyone deserves to have the love in life that they want. We all deserve to sparkle. Please hit like and subscribe, share if this video was helpful and I want to hear from you. Comment below and let me know what works for you, what you enjoyed in this video and I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.